Last week on the season. But this right here is what you call a Kool-Aid spoon. Well, you don't use it for anything else but to make Kool-Aid. It's very important. A lot of people don't do that. Hold each other accountable. Let's go stretch like a champion. Hold each other accountable. Drive, drive, lead. No, no, no. Drive him. Drive him. Drive him. Through his hardships or difficulties, um, he certainly has overcome them with the right type of attitude to, to put others first and to, to be a giver and, and not a taker. I'm kind of tired. You're tired? I want to play some more. Bootleg to the left, and Kelly's throwing deep to Treadwell's. Got him out there. He's got the catch, and he is in the end zone. Touchdown, Ole Miss. We have one game seasons, and you control you. Great win, great energy, great passion, great love. That's all it is. It's just straight love. Games going. They get the competitive blood flowing from yeah. practice. <laughs> it's my, it's my day, baby. It's my day. When I, when, look, when I'm on camera, I perform, baby. Gleason. No. We're Gleason nice with the two though. Yeah. It's the best player in the locker room. It's true. It's true. The best player in the locker room? No. Will Gleason. Count me no. baby. I pay for these VIP seats, so you know I'm in the I'm in the box. You know they on the, you see them over there. They in the lower level. Oh! Two and zero. Oh. Two and zero. Two and zero. Last victim. It was a good game, but uh, gotta go to meetings now. So done with fun. Time for business. See you. Hey, here we go. Hey, as we watch this thing, we had way too many drops. Everything's perfect. Make the play. It ain't gonna be. Yeah, would I love him to say, man, that ball should be right there? Yes, 100. percent But make that quarterback right. This tells me that we ain't. Uh, we're about 95 percent locked in. When this happens, I get nervous. That's the stuff that's gonna hurt us Saturday. So why are you doing all this on camera? <laughs> Y'all so fake. Y'all oh, so fake. Y'all so fake. Girls gonna be watching to see if we talk. Y'all so fake. Like, hey, listen. Today is the last practice we got. Man, there ain't no sense in holding back. Let's get this thing right. Dude, give, give maximum effort every single play and let's go. Let's make this thing perfect today. It's perfect Thursday. Let's be locked in. Let's go. Be out there at 405. Let's roll.
Senior Cody Core is experienced. Well, you got gray hair. No, you have a gray. You got gray hair on your chin. No, I, I'm 37 though. Okay. I'm serious. I'm 21. I'm serious. When you ain't that old, you just look old. You get a lot of people. You move old. You get a lot of wisdom from old people. But if his time in the SEC has taught him anything, it's the value of hard work. <laughs> Hey, listen, good day, hey, but we weren't totally locked in. The energy was good, but y'all weren't totally locked in. If we won't play like we played last week, we got to get back to practicing like we practiced last week. Let me make it on three. Let me on six. One, two, three. Four, five, six. A native of Auburn, Alabama, senior wide receiver Cody Core is no stranger to big-time football. From Auburn, Alabama, and uh, I mess with my teammates a lot when they ask me where I'm from. Uh, they're like, "Where you from, CC?" And I'm like, "334, Auburn, Alabama, South Side by the Creek." They know me for that, 334 guy. Football's a big deal in Auburn. Uh, I wanted him to play basketball. We worked hard at basketball, and he, he excelled at basketball. And um, football just came natural to him after working with basketball so much. Auburn High School is one of the top schools in, in Alabama. Uh, we compete with a, a lot of good teams, uh, Carver, uh, Up Like, uh, Prattville now. we got a big stadium and good fan base, and it's, it's really loud. After two middling seasons in Oxford, Core was poised for a breakout junior year. As he prepared for summer camp, he received life-changing news. His mother Amy had unexpectedly passed away at the youthful age of 37. He was actually in, in summer school, and that night uh, we took my wife Amy to the hospital, and I was hoping for the best, so I wanted everything to stay as normal as possible. And I waited till the last moment because if it was just going to be surgery and she was going to be okay, I wanted Cody to stay at school. And so when I seen that it was going to take a turn for the worse, I called Coach Hurd and and told uh, him to as calmly and the tail code he needed to make it to Birmingham. When you at a, at a funeral for your wife, Cody's mom, and you see practically the whole Ole Miss football coaching staff show up, you know he's in the, in the right place. After the funeral, Coach Free said, the one thing you don't have to worry about is Cody. I will take care of Cody. He said, I give you my word, I will take care of Cody. Hearing that from Coach Freeze, it just let me know he was in the right place, the best place for him. My brother's been around me, helped me. And uh, coming here and playing football, it just, it kind of, it doesn't take it off my mind, but it, it lets me know that I have, I have to keep going, I have to keep pushing. After the funeral, Cor would immediately return to practice, having the best summer camp of his career. In the first game of the 2014 season, his results would validate his effort. Pass over the middle, got a man wide open, caught at the five, and in the end zone, scoring the first touchdown of 2014, Cody Core, the junior from Auburn, Alabama. After the first touchdown, I knew it was time to really show the world what, uh, what I've been working hard for. And it just, I had my brothers next, next to me and the coaches had faith in me. And we just kept going. Play action, quick pass. They got a man open. It's core on a seam route. And he's off the race of the 50, the 45. He may go. He may go. 25, 20, down the middle of the field. The five. Touchdown, Ole Miss. Cody Core takes it to the house. And they had the game. Had the game. Core went on a tear in 2014 hauling in 41 receptions for 558 yards and six touchdowns, all on the heels of losing his mother. This season, Core is on pace for another big year, and the future looks bright for number 88. He's one of the best guys, one of the best receivers in that room. Uh, just, just, just blew up, man. 
This is another example of come, overcoming adversity. Didn't blink. He fought with us. He worked with us. And uh, he's still working now. So definitely uh, respect Cody Core a lot. And uh, he's a great, great, great guy and a great part of this team. The most important thing is to get his grades and to get a degree. And then from there, we're going to let the rubber meet the road. So like I always tell people, I never pray for a touchdown. I never pray for a 100-yard game. I pray for health and strength and the rest will take care of itself. In week nine of the quickly aging college football season, the Rebels would take to the road to face the Tigers from Auburn. A year ago, these two teams met in Oxford in a game that came down to the wire and cost Rebel Laquan Treadwell the remainder of the season. I just couldn't wait to play them again, you know, um, play for better results. And, I mean, it was just an intense week. I was fired up. I was ready to play. I actually looked at the play a couple times just to, you know, create more fire. It was just that it was in the back of their minds all week that it was, it was unfinished business. We weren't going to get back on that plane with the feeling that we had last year. I told you last night the words, the phrase for today for me. Surrender the outcome burn the and burn the ships. Surrender the outcome and don't worry about that. <laughs> what you do need to worry about is every single play burning the ships. Yeah. And playing that one like it's the only one that matters. The only play. You never know when that game decider is coming. So you burn the ships on every play, give everything you have with execution and effort on that one, and surrender the outcome, and we'll see what it says at the end of the day. For the road team, scoring first is a key component to pulling out the win. On their first possession, from their own 19, the Rebels were up to the task. Gun formation again for Kelly on second and three, wants the throw, fires far side, got his man Treadwell wide open, a little deep out. The handoff is to Walton towards the left side. He's got some room to the 35, knocked off his feet at the 31-yard line. He'll have the first down, a pickup of 14. That first drive uh, of the game and just, you know, moving the ball down the field just came from pure passion. And, you know, we just kind of want to just come out and make a statement. Getting on the board early in the SEC matchup is, is very important. You know, it, it creates momentum. It creates a comfort level, uh, knowing that we can move the ball against uh, the defense that we're going against. And um, it just keep, it keeps the energy up. The Wonderlick field goal would put the Rebels on the scoreboard first and give the Land Sharks their turn. The ball squarely between the hashes, so there's no wide side. Back to throw White, standing in the pocket. Lots of time, wants to throw now, runs out to his right, still has lots of time. Now fires deep down the middle, and the pass is going to be intercepted by Ole Miss at the 20-yard line. It was intended for Thomas, and Bridges comes away with it for Ole Miss. We had to find some way to bring some energy to the team, and Coach Freeze is just like, all right, I got something for the defensive backs. Every interception, I'll do a dance move. I'll learn one from my daughters each week. And I think his daughter, Madison, has been teaching him how to do the whip. So Tony ended up getting the uh, first turnover today and uh, ran over there to the sideline, and, and Coach Freeze, a man of his word, they did the whip. <laughs> you got to get a little more sway, you know. Yeah, got to get the stiffness out. You got to raise his leg a little bit more. You know, he said he'll do a dance every time they catch an interception. So I'll be looking forward to each week and seeing what, what his dance moves are. Hey, good job. Get off your feet. Get off your feet. You know we do that. We do that now. We do that now. As well as the defense played in the first half, facing a big play offense like the Auburn Tigers means you're never out of the woods. Third and five, back to throw, wide, deep over the middle man, wide open. Caught at the 15 and in the end zone, touchdown, that was a piece of cake. You talked about explosive plays, they get 147 yards on third and four. Bro, he's got to calm down, bro, good. Bro, we, get, we get first down, they're going to quiet down. Yeah, I know. Got plenty of time, let's go. It don't matter what happens, no matter how far, it's like we just got to go score a touchdown. Down seven points, and with momentum slipping, the Rebels faced a difficult decision. Fourth down three, so it's Ole Miss's turn. 
He wants to throw, fires to Ingram. He makes the catch, and he has got the first down and has wrestled down at the 34-yard line. He's such a weapon. Rebels have 407 to work with. Now a handoff. It's Judd straight ahead. Has the first down. The 20 breaks clear. He may go. 10-5. Touchdown. Ole Miss. Akeem Judd takes it to the house, and we're a PAT away from tying it. Akeem Judd, uh, you saw the juke move that he put on the secondary. Uh, that was just spectacular and just you know, finally, you know, seeing him just score a touchdown really just added fire to a lot of people. And, you know, it, it, I mean, it, it got everybody on the sideline excited. Let's go! Let's go! Turn up! Turn up one! Converting on fourth down gave the Rebels a much needed spark and allowed them to tie the ball game going into the half. A game is 60 minutes. You have 30 more Let's minutes go. to play with each other, for each other. There's nothing that makes better memories. They're playing together with a team you care about in battles like this, on the road, everybody against you. Man, remember, forget, forget the results, surrender the outcome, and play every play to win that play, and you'll be fine. So the Rebels will start at the 25-yard line, first down and 10, 10-10 game. In the second half, the Rebel offense was clicking. Even their fumbles led to positive yards. Trips to the right this time with three receivers. Ingram's wide out there with the ball. Fumbled, and then a pass far side. Caught at the 15-yard line. The ball was dropped on the snap by Kelly. Picked it up with a basketball bounce. Fired it to Stream. Fell on the back shoulder throw. 37-yarder on the way. And Wonderlick is two for two as Ole Miss has the lead. Back to throw, Kelly. Over the middle, has his man Treadwell, caught at the 45. He's to midfield and wrestled down at the 45 of Auburn. Well, he he made like Robinson, the running back for the Tigers. It wouldn't go down. Man, they're too big, man. You can't stop. Come on, bro, man. Hey, he's dead. Look at that. Hey, he's dead. He's dead. He's action bootleg. Kelly has time deep down the near sidelines. He's got a man caught at the six-yard line by Derrick. He makes a move, and he steps into the end zone. They did go deep, burn double coverage, and the Rebels regained the lead. He ran and come back and go, and the DV bit on it. I was like, throw it, and Chad just let it fly. And, and Derrick did the rest. You know, he caught it and made two people miss and got in the end zone and did a little salsa dance. So it was all fun. It was just it was just an exciting moment. He said, when I had the opportunity, I just tried to make the most of it. And so that's the type of... Uh, young man he is, so when he, uh, you see a young man like that have success, you're always happy for him. Every time we touch the ball, we need to score. Here we go, O. This is what we've been working for. Hey, 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 in times like this, this is what we've been working for. Go, go, in times like this, this is what we've been working for. The Rebel offense would almost double their first half total in the second, with the biggest dagger coming from Laquan Treadwell. One of the best catches you'll see in college football in 2015. I was just wait, really waiting on Chad to throw it. And when I seen it in the air, I was like, I got to make this play. And I made it. But I didn't think he was going to, like, jump on my back or anything. So I don't know what happened after that. It was just that fast. Got up, didn't know what to do. <laughs> Flipped the ball and just took a knee and just thank God. Finish this day. It's a 10-round fight, baby. A 10-round fight. collapses as Marquise Haynes gets another sack. Our defense played tough. The pass rush was there. Uh, they stopped their run game. Uh, the coverage was there. Johnson wants to throw, steps to the pocket, throws it deep over the middle, and it's going to be tipped away by the Rebels as Elston got a hand on. He threw it into double coverage intended for Jason Smith. Just by seeing our defense go out there and work hard and play hard, and even when their backs are against the wall, it makes the offense just want to work that much harder. So last play right here, three seconds left. Here comes pressure, he steps up, he's hit by Haynes, runs over, Haynes is still after him, he's in trouble, hit as he throws it downfield, it's short, and Ole Miss has knocked off Auburn. The Rebels win in the state of Alabama for the second time this year. He's got another dub in the SEC.
We coming up quick. We got Arkansas next week. Going down in the Grove. Be there. Huge, baby. Three more. Three more. It was an ugly win, but hey, man, we pulled it out. Our run game tremendous, man. We're going to keep it up. Yeah, good. Got three more to go, baby. Three more. That game, they gave us a good fight, but you know what? It shouldn't have been that close. No, sir. So let's learn from what we didn't do right. Celebrate the victory while we do it, and then get ready for another one at home. It's the little things that matter, man. Offensively, we've uh, we probably didn't get the number of points today that I that I thought uh, we we were we should have been able to. Um, but we found a way to make some big ones when we needed to, and and come out of here with the W. That's that's the ultimate goal. And really, I heard someone say it this week. I don't really care about stats or time of possession if if you win the game. So it makes it makes the trip home a lot sweeter. And uh, we got to get ready for another difficult one next Saturday. We got Arkansas, and we owe them more big time. They embarrassed us, but they coming to our house at 2:30 next week, and we throwing it down. So upset. So upset. So. <laughs> Great SEC win. Everybody played good. Man, excited to win. But guess what? It's payback next week, so we need everybody in the vault. Bring it. Yeah. We ain't forgot about last year. Everybody. We ain't forgot about it at all. Be disciplined, tackle well, um, get off the field on third downs, and eliminate the uh, explosive plays, then uh, uh, should, be, should be a good day for us. Receivers just getting our depths on routes. Um, we feel like we're the best receivers in the country, and um, it'll just be the little things that, that's holding us back from being as great as we can be. Lock on to your assignment, do your job, and we should turn out um, just right. Trust and communication is what we need uh, to win this game. Each Wednesday during the fall, tune in for a new episode of The Season. Also, don't forget to download the Rubble Rewards app for a chance to win exclusive prizes.